Chuck, Earth Day coming up. Earth Day, yes it is. So, what, what people might not know is if you ask people, if you just ask around, what started Earth Day? And you'll get 20 different answers. To say, well, the time came where we just had to think about Earth and we had to, you'll get a bunch of different answers. So, so in retrospect, it's obvious to everyone that it should have happened. Right. But I don't know anyone who has fully analyzed the sort of the meta phenomenon going on at the time that created the landscape on which this could have happened at all. This year, they're talking about 50 years of Earth Day, so... 50 years, that's right, that's right. So, uh, if you want to ask, well, when did people start being concerned about the environment? Uh, many people will take you back to 1962, the publication of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, which was a, sort of a warning to us all, uh, in particular about the use of pesticides on our crops and what effect that could have in the ecosphere and on our own health. Okay, I, I just got to stop you right now. What's that? How do you know this crap, man? Seriously. <laughs> My God. I mean, academic, we know stuff. That's, all, that's our only currency. 1962, Silent Spring. I mean, like, I had to write this down because that's, <laughs> it's, I mean, wow. You should I mean, say, how come you don't know it? <laughs> <laughs> actually, very good question. Okay. All right, so Rachel Carson. Yeah, and it actually went to number one on the New York Times bestseller for a couple of months, I think. And um, so, so there were certain seeds planted there, but you have to ask, did those gain taproot? Did they, did they sprout? But what begins to happen in the mid-decade? 1965, 66, 67, we have our buildup in Vietnam, okay? So the Cold War takes on a whole other patina with a hot war in right. Southeast Asia. Mm. Servicemen begin dying. And so the pop culture concerns were not so much about the environment, they were about war. So the attention of the hippie movement, which is so much of what the cultural iconography of the 1960s captured, was not about the environment. That would happen later. Hmm. So when did it happen? Well, was it 1966? No. 67? No. So what happens? 1968 comes around. December. The first time we leave Earth for another destination, the Apollo program kicks into high gear. And what happens? Apollo 8 leaves Earth, goes to the moon, didn't land, but it goes to the moon, orbits the moon a dozen times. One of those times, Earth rises above the lunar landscape and they capture that photo. Perhaps the most famous photo ever taken of anything, and it's called Earthrise. And we stood there, December 1968, the bloodiest year of the Vietnam War, 1968. Uh, we lost more servicemen that year than any other. Not only that, we also lost Martin Luther King. We lost Bobby Kennedy. The bloodiest year of the decade, December, we present, we, we scientists, engineers, cosmic folk, present the world with an image of Earth, without color-coded countries identified. It was Earth as only nature would have you view it with Oceans and land and clouds. That changed us because there we were alone together in space, in the dark vacuum of space, spaceship Earth. And so what would happen? The whole Earth catalog, which came out in 1968, they took that photo and that became their icon. That was the, became their cover, the whole Earth catalog, because we're thinking about the whole Earth now, not internationally, because that still references nations, doesn't it? We're talking about a place that has no borders. And what happens? 1969, we walk on the moon for the first time. And you know what happened? We went to the moon to explore the moon, and we looked back and discovered Earth for the first time. 
What happens in 1970? Earth Day is founded. All of a sudden, people are thinking about Earth. That day is not called International Day. It's not called United Nations Day. No, forget nations, forget country. It is Earth Day. What else happens in 1970? The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration gets founded. Before then, no one had really linked together the study of the atmosphere to the study of the oceans and the Earth. This was a new concept. It was the air and then there's Earth. No, they're interconnected climactically. NOAA, N-O-A-A, -A, one of the great names of any organization, the great acronyms. National Absolutely. Oceanic and Atmospheric Commission, 1970. You know what else happened in 1970? While we are going to the moon, the Environmental Protection Agency is founded in 1970. 1971. What happens? There's a European uh, uh, agency that, that's founded called Doctors Without Borders. You know, they might have happened anyway, but would they have called themselves Without Borders? Where does that concept even arrive in the absence of an image of Earth that shows no borders? Where does that even come to you? And what happens? DDT gets banned. 1972, we are still going to the moon. What, what else? Oh, the Clean, uh, the Clean Water Act? was in 1972, and leaded gas was banned, 1973. And all of lead from the environment was taken out. All of that happened. We stopped going to the moon in 1972, and there's some spillage of that mood of what it was to go to the moon. I'll give it to 1973. From 1968 to 73, we were going to the moon looking back at Earth, and that's when all of this happened. And Earth Day, first in the United States and then internationally. Ask any of those people why they're doing it. They say, well, we, of course we have to honor Earth, Mother Earth. Why did you do that in 1960? Why did you do that in 1950? Why didn't you wait until 1980? Why didn't you do that in 1962, 65, 55? Why did you do it in 1900? No. You did that while we were going to the moon. And you can do something called an engram and look at the frequency with which certain words are used in all printed matter in any given language in the world. You look up words like environment, okay? There was a little bit of blip on it back when Teddy Roosevelt wanted to preserve the national parks. Yeah. Then it sort of trickles along. 1968, 69, the usage goes up by a factor of 10. All these conservation goes up by a factor of 10. All of these words that we now associate with the green movement, all of that achieved major currency during the time we were going to the moon. I simply share with you the observation that those who say, why are we going to the moon when we're going into space when we have problems on earth? I submit to you that a perspective descended upon us that forever changed us. And that perspective of preserving earth is priceless. Wow, man. I don't even have any jokes for that. Damn. <laughs> I mean, God. That was, uh, I have to say, that that's very profound. And what struck me when you were talking is, why, why do we go to space when there's problems on Earth? You wouldn't even know you were on Earth unless we went to space. There you go. You wouldn't know Earth's Earth, we wouldn't know how Earth plugged in to the bigger right. system of planets and solar system and, and, and later on the galaxy. Yeah. I'm just saying that the space program was not only about Tang. It was, it was a, I don't think we went there knowing we would re, uh, not re anything, where, how, that we would kick in an understanding of Earth and how precious it is as a life-sustaining planet. Uh, that, I don't think that was the intent, but it was definitely a consequence. And you remember that the most famous um, commercial of them all, P uh, public service announcement, um, with the Native American tearing up when people threw garbage at his feet as he stood along the highway. Do you, do you remember this commercial? Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I, of course, yeah. I mean, I mean, I would cry too if people were throwing garbage at me. <laughs> at feet. I mean, okay, holding aside the fact that the guy who played the Native American is Italian. Yeah. You tell anybody that. He had all these Native American roles and movies and stuff. Hold it, holding that aside, when was that commercial? Do you I know? Don't, I do not know. 1971. 
Wow. It wasn't 1965. It could have been. We, were, we weren't throwing garbage out of the window any more in 1970 than we were in 1965. But suddenly we had an awareness. And by the way, there were other natural disasters, pollution disasters. There was the, the, um, the Love Canal pollution, with chemical pollution with chemical plants. They're all, so it's not like we didn't know about pollution. It's not like we hadn't thought about pollution. It was the global synthesis of our concern for the planet without regard to the borders represented by politics. And as Carl Sagan famously said, air molecules don't carry passports to move among countries. And I can extend that to water molecules as well. You pollute the water here, it spreads around the world. You pollute the air here, it shows up elsewhere. Okay, so all of this, we are in this together. And something during the corona pandemic, uh, I think has driven home certainly for some, and it may take a little effort for others, is to recognize that there are many challenges we face, not only as humans, but as civilization, that requires a global cooperative effort to solve. Yes. Long, I'm in this country and you're in that country. I'll do my thing. You don't do your thing and I'll do my thing. Excuse me. We are all humans and we are dependent on an ecosystem, on an ecosphere that sustains us. So to run around and say, I'm going to do this, whether or not you do that, that is not the behavior of a species that will become better shepherds of its future so that our descendants can be proud of who we are in the world we have bequeathed them rather than embarrassed by what we have become by the world that we have just handed them. I'm going to take um, what Neil said second for 200, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a feeling that the second, the latter is, is, is more likely than the former. Yeah, I want uh, the former. I we so it takes another. We need another. You know what it is, Chuck. We got it. We we, we, we need gotta, another dis, another cosmic perspective yes. to descend upon us in another kind of way. Uh, each of these are, I think, dare I say, that they're they're steps in cultural evolution, mm -hmm. where the whole world is thinking differently about something that we either never thought about before or thought it was one way rather than another way, when in fact it's a third way that we should be paying attention to. So for me, Earth Day is a triumph of what the space program has gifted civilization world over. That's a beautiful thing, man. That is gorgeous. I but, think what we need is everybody to take a trip in a Tesla into outer space. <laughs> we're probably running out of time, but let me, let me just share with you. Um, if you speak with the moonwalkers, there aren't many of them left. I've had the privilege of being friends with most of them, including Neil Armstrong. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Chuck, I'm glad you could slip a joke in in this last 10 minutes. And that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, uh, you, have, you, you know them all, but, but go ahead. Here's the point. They walked on the moon. It's American taxpayers who put them there. Mm. It's American engineers who figured out how to get them there. Mm. It's so we can praise the moonwalkers themselves, but basically population at the time, 200 million people got them there. So in a sense, we all walked on the moon, but watch what happens. They travel internationally. And to a person, they would recount this same story. Foreign nationals would walk up to them and say, we did it. We walked on the moon. Wow. They didn't say you did it. They mm -hmm. didn't say Americans did it. Mm -hmm. They said, we did it. We finally did it. And that stuck with them. It was in a profound way. Because especially though we planted an American flag, the plaque that was left on the moon was an image of the earth. And it says, we come in peace for all mankind. Okay? That's what that plaque said. 
Nobody who put flags on mountaintops or conquered countries or Columbus putting Spanish flags in countries, did it say we come in peace for all mankind? No, we come for Spain to claim land, all right? We come for Germany to take over. We come for, everybody's talking about this. We went to the moon in peace for all mankind, and that message went around the world. Wow. Well, they better be glad that I, I, I mean, everyone is glad that I'm not an astronaut. Two things. One, <laughs> people would have been like, we did it. And I'd have been like, what you mean we? And two, <laughs> and two instead of uh, we come in peace for all mankind, it would have been Chuck was here. <laughs> <laughs> <You would> have... <laughs> okay, so Chuck, I'm really glad we never made you an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We, we got to close it out there. All right. That was Star Talk. Earth Day edition, um, and our little explainer video. Chuck, always good to have you on these. Always a pleasure, man. All right, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. As always, keep looking out. <laughs>